Last year, Puma made a triumphant return to running. But to many runners, it's still a relative newcomer in the space. Today, let's take a look at the bellwether for any running brand, the Daily Trainer. This is the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. Thirteen point one six miles, eight minutes, forty nine seconds per mile, and one hundred thirty eight beats per minute today. Taking the Puma Velocity Nitro Two out for a first run. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this daily trainer and how it did after just this first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes I purchased myself. No one sent it to me or is paying me to make this video, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. First, let's go over some specs on the shoe. This is a 33 and a half millimeter shoe in the back with a 10 millimeter drop, giving us 23.5 millimeters of midsole system in the forefoot and what we have in the midsole is two foams we've got puma's nitro foam which is a nitrogen infused layer of foam up at the top and then below that there is a full length layer of eva now last year in the velocity nitro one there was only like kind of like a little sliver of eva right back here in the heel and then also a tpu heel clip to kind of keep everything from getting too wobbly as your foot hit the ground they've done away with that tpu heel clip and extended the eva all the way out throughout the forefoot. Moving to the outsole, we've got Puma Grip, which we saw last year. And for me, in the shoes that I tested from Puma, the Puma Grip definitely is something that lasted a long time while also provided plenty of traction. Moving to the upper, we have a lightweight and thin mesh here with plenty of room in the toe box. It didn't feel too wide or too long. It kind of felt just right, but still giving me plenty of room for my toes to wiggle around in here. In the tongue, there is a very lightly padded tongue that doesn't come up too high up here. So it did a really good job of staying out of the way. And then as you move further back towards the ankle and the heel, there is a surprising amount of padding back here for a daily trainer, but it all worked out really well for me and it didn't feel like there was too much going on in the back. There is a TPU heel cup back here, but it's a pretty small one uh, toward the top of the heel. It gets pretty floppy in the shoe, which is generally something that I like. You're relying a little bit more on fit to keep the foot secure in the shoe rather than hardware to keep things from moving around. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a relatively light stated weight of 8.8 .8 ounces. Now let's talk about what it was like to run in this shoe. I really did enjoy running in the Velocity Nitro 2. I don't have experience in the initial version to compare it against, but I did run in the DV8 Nitro from last year, which is a shoe that had full length nitro foam in it. And I'd say the main differences between that shoe and this one is that I felt like with the addition of the EVA, I felt like the ride was just a little bit more smooth and I felt like it was a little bit softer underfoot. So I felt like with the combination, the nitro foam as the top layer and the EVA as the bottom layer, you have a nice sponginess when your foot hits the ground, but as you're pushing off, there is a nice responsiveness to it as well. So I felt like the changes that they made to the EVA to make it full length definitely helped to make this shoe feel like it was a very balanced shoe that could handle a lot of different types of paces and a lot of different distances. The main sensation that I did get from the shoe though is that this Puma Grip outsole rubber uh, kind of dominates the experience for me but that's also something that i tend to find in a lot of the more no nonsense daily trainers that are out there you get a little bit more rubber outsole uh, which kind of deadens the feeling of the midsole foams but the trade-off for that is that you're getting a lot more grip and you're also getting increased longevity in terms of the durability of that outsole traction overall the puma velocity nitro 2 feels like 
like a very straightforward workhorse of a shoe, something that you can put on for just about any kind of run, take it out there and it's gonna do pretty good in almost every situation. And the fact that it's lightweight means that I do think it's gonna be a little bit more versatile. So for those of you who don't wanna get a closet full of shoes and maybe want one or two to get you through, through your next training block, I think that the Velocity Nitro 2 definitely could fit the bill as a shoe that can kind of do it all as a little bit of a Swiss Army knife when it comes to different kinds of running. As far as the upper went, I felt like it was really comfortable. The fit was dialed in really well. Uh, I will say that there's two main sensations that I got from the upper. One was that it was really low cut and they kind of talk about that as well in the description of the shoe on Puma's website. The other thing that I definitely noticed is that the padding was very snug. I felt like it had a very like kind of like locked in feel in terms of the padding that was there around that lower part of my foot. It just felt like it was very secure in here without it feeling tight, without it feeling like it was going to potentially lead to any sort of kind of chafing or anything Thing like that. The half marathon distance that I took it on right out of the box, I didn't have any of those kinds of problems. The fit and the padding is very well placed. I feel like they did a lot of thinking about exactly how this heel cup was going to fit on a person's foot and it definitely felt very snug in a kind of a warm embrace kind of a way. Overall at the $120 price point, Puma has a solid daily trainer on their hands and I think it's one of those workhorse kinds of shoes where you're just going to be able to throw miles at it and it's just gonna keep on smiling and let you do what you need to do. And so very happy with what I'm seeing in this Puma Velocity Nitro 2. Puma for me in my mind in the running space is still kind of like the underdog and it's always kind of fun to root for the underdog because I love to see another competitor in in the space, I think they bring a very well built option into 2022. So those are my thoughts on the Puma Velocity Nitro after just the first run. Feel free to put any questions that you might have in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?